part one of a two-part presentation, I'll be talking about unbecoming a mature Christian, unbecoming a mature Christian, and I'll be covering um, various topic as to what it means to be a mature Christian. You know, um, I have an experience as a child growing up that stays in my mind and teaches many spiritual lessons for me. My father, well, my parents, we grew up in the country. And even though my father was a tailor, he still did his farming in his backyard, you would say. And as children, we love to follow. You know, we see, we see our father plant the yam and the peas and stuff. And we try to do the same thing. You know, we plant corn, we plant peas, we plant yam and stuff like that. And we, we you know, have a plot of land that we do our own farming. In. But as I reflect on my experience as a child, I realized that our farming, as Jamaican people would say, never come to anything. We have, we have, I don't remember ever reaping from it. And sometimes we would get distracted and go on doing something else, start playing other games or get involved in other things. And so we never reap from our farming. And the point is that, and the reason for it is because we were farming for fun. We were not farming to get results. We were, only, we were only involved in the process because we enjoyed doing it. And the thought came to me that there are some persons who approach their spirituality like us farming as children. Some persons are involved in church. They read their Bibles. They pray. They go to church. but you're not going to reap from it. <laughs> God is not going to reap from their experience. Um, because for some reason, they are not doing it with the end in mind. You know, for example, in our case, um, we farm for fun, but a real farmer cannot do this. A farmer who whose family depends on him for sustenance. Can't do that way. A real farmer thinks about the result. He farms, he is planting and nurturing his crop with the end in mind. And I can tell you this, if, if as a Christian, you are living the Christian life without having the end in mind, your life spiritually will not be a happy one. It is going to be one that is constantly bugged with fear and uncertainty. And so at this point, I want to share with you the importance of what it means to, to be mature and to accomplish the goal that, 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 that G Jesus has for us. And so what we're going to be covering quickly is that we're going to be looking at four things. We're going to talk about what the Bible teaches about spiritual maturity, how is spiritual maturity measured, what spiritual maturity is, how to become spiritually mature, and then hindrances to spiritual maturity. We probably will we'll only be able to cover the first two or three in this presentation, and then we cover the others afterwards. So let's get right into it. Let's look at what the Bible teaches about spiritual maturity. Um, First, the Bible Spirit teaches us that spiritual maturity is, is very important. Um, it tells us that each of us who accept Christ are referred to as being born again. Or in Isaiah 61 verse 3, the planting of the Lord. And if we are born again, it means that we are babes. And there is um, a goal to accomplish. Each of us as parents who have children, we know that our, our, our goal for our children is for them to grow up 
to not become dependent on us all the time, but to be mature adults being able to make decisions on their own. The same thing, similar thing with a farmer. The farmer who plants, he nurtures his crop. And what he has in mind is harvesting. The farmer who farms have harvesting in mind. And it's the same thing with God. When we come to the Lord and surrender our lives to him, God has harvesting in mind. And what is that harvest that he's, that he's expecting? He's expecting us to bear fruit, according to John chapter 15, verses 1 to 5. God called us so we can bear fruit. And what is that fruit? The fruit represents the reproduction of Christ's character in our lives. That is the end. That is the end that Christ has in mind when we come to him. And then G. White in the book Christ of the Lesson says, Christ is seeking to reproduce himself in the hearts of men. And he does this through those who believe in him. The object of the Christian life is fruit bearing. The reproduction of Christ's character in the believer that it might be reproduced in others. So that is the end that Jesus has in mind when we come to him, that his character might be reproduced in us. The second thing that the Bible teaches about spiritual maturity and fruit bearing is that it is critical to your eternal salvation. The Bible tells us in John chapter 15 that every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he removes it. And in Matthew 3, verse 10, the, the, the John the Baptist says, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. And so growing up in Christ and becoming a mature Christian is very important. Matter of fact, the Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1, in verse 1 to 7, he outlined all that is required for us to grow up and become mature. And then he says something very interesting in verse 8 and 9. He says, if these things be in you, referring to the things that he, that he listed earlier, he says, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall be neither be be unfruitful, barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, listen to this carefully now, he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So Peter is talking about Christians. Peter is talking about Christians who have been baptized, who have been walking with the Lord. If you do not grow up if you do not allow the fruit and the graces of the Spirit to become mature in your life, Peter says that you are blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten. In other words, really, Peter is saying you are in a backslidden position. So it's very important that we grow up in Christ to become mature Christian. As a matter of fact, Peter continued by saying that to grow in Christ, is part of making our calling and election sure. He says, wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So we're going to look at what these things that he's talking about. The Apostle John also speaks to the importance of maturity. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, it says, Herein is our love made perfect. And that word perfect there is a word for mature. Here in the, is our love made perfect, that you may, may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. And then he says, there, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out all fear. In other words, um, when you are mature, there is no more anxiety and worry and fear about your future. Now, the other thing, so, so, so the Bible teaches that spiritual maturity is very important. Very important to our success in the Christian life. Very important to the expectation that God has for us. Very important to um, 
our own outlook on the future. The Bible also teaches that there is a difference between the spiritually mature and the babe in Christ. And that's what I'll be looking at right now. It says that in the, there are two stages of growth, the, the mature and the babe. The babe is from the Greek word nepios, which is really means one who cannot speak. And as we know, a baby is one, you know, one of the key things about a baby is that they, they're, not, they're unable to speak. When my, I have a two-year-old son, well, he's not two-year-old fully yet, one, one plus, one year and 11 months. When he wants something, he cannot talk. He come and pull on my clothes and tell me to, that he wants to go and get some water and stuff like that. So the Bible defines the spiritually babe as those who are unable to speak. And it also defines the mature as those who have been made perfect in faith. And perfect here simply means they, are, they have grown up. Let's quickly now look at some Bible passage that speak to this. In Hebrews chapter 5 through to 6, the Apostle Paul says, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become as such as need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them which are full of age, even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And then the Apostle Paul encouraged them to go on to perfection. So quickly now, we're going to look at how we measure spiritual maturity based upon what the Bible teaches. There are three aspects of our lives as Christians by which maturity is measured. One is our behavior. Two, our faith, and three, our understanding, based upon what the Bible teaches about spiritual maturity. Our behavior, our character, our faith, and our understanding. Let's look, for example, now at what this means. Let's look at our behavior. In the Bible, the spiritually immature or the spiritual babe, the Bible tells us that they struggle with unforgiveness and envy in first corinthians 3 first corinthians chapter 3 and verses 1 to 3 the apostle paul tells us i think i have it on the screen next yes he says the apostle paul says and i brethren could not speak unto you as as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even as unto babes in christ i've, I've fed you with milk and not with meat for hitherto you were not able to bear it, and neither were able. And then it says, for you are yet carnal, for we are as there is among you envying and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? So the Apostle Paul is basically saying that when we have strife and fighting and wars within the church, it is evidence that we are not mature spiritually. When we have divisions, when we have one person taking sides with another person, in, in, the, in the case of the Corinthians, some were saying, I am of Paul. Others were saying, I am of Apollos. I am of Peter. And the Apostle Paul is saying, that is evidence that we are not spiritually mature. The other evidence um, of lack of maturity in, in terms of behavior is that when we obey God in order to merit his favor, when we see obedience as something that to merit God's favor. Now, the spiritually mature demonstrates these characteristics based on what, what the Bible teaches. First, they therefore must be coerced into obedience. In order for God to get them to obey, you have to force them. Just like when you have young children, you have to put strict measures in place to get them to obey. But as they grow, you release some of the restrictions and allow them to exercise your own free will. Same thing in the spiritual life. One evidence of spiritual immaturity is when we have to be coerced. 
just like the children of Israel. God had a, a difficult time getting them to obey. Every time he, he revealed his glory to them and they rejoiced. When they face problem next time, they'll go back into the same old behavior. Another characteristic of a spiritually immature is that according to Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12, they are constantly going to stumble. They are constantly going to fall into sin and need again and again to be taught how to get out of it. That's another evidence of spiritual immaturity. Then, but the, but the spiritually mature, and I'm going to expound on this more later, later, are persons who practice unconditional love. These are persons who are able to love their enemies. These are persons who are able to still carry on their responsibilities despite others do to them. These are the spiritually mature. They obey God not out of coercion or trying to merit his favor, but out of an understanding that, that obedience is a true um, source of victory and happiness. They don't have to be coerced. They only need to be told what to do and they'll do it when they realize it is, it is wrong. You know, as a, as a pastor, you know, whenever I have a problem, if, if I have to be telling members of the church to dress this way or dress that way and stop bringing, it is evidence that spiritually we are not growing. And, you know, we need a challenge. The second aspect by which maturity is measured, according to the Bible, is by our faith. Our faith. So we are measured, maturity is measured by our behavior and maturity is measured by our faith. Now, what is faith? Um, we're going to look at that in a little while. But when a person is not mature in faith, they're going to get discouraged because when trials come upon them, they're going to complain, just like the Israelites in the wilderness, they're going to say, is God among us or not? Even, even amidst the, the, the display of God's glory, they're going to question his love for them. Secondly, the person who is spiritually immature will see chastening as a sign of God's displeasure, meaning they're going to see if they're facing problems, they're going to feel that something is wrong and God is angry with them. They are not able to, like Job, to interpret um, those difficult situations and still remain faithful to God. Thirdly, the one who is spiritually immature in faith will, will be filled with uncertainty and fear about the Christian life and the future. Okay? According to 1 John chapter 4, as we read earlier, perfect love casts out all fear because fear has torment. All right? But the spiritually mature in faith are those who accept trials as a normal part of their experience. And even though it, it might be difficult, they hold on to God as the same. They see chasing as a sign of God's love. And they understand that the future is not something to worry about. They are certain about their future based upon their faith in Christ. Finally, the final dimension of the spiritual life by which maturity is measured is by understanding. And what I mean by understanding is by our knowledge of the teachings of scripture or sometimes referred to as doctrine. That helps to determine our maturity. And we're going to show you how that affects your maturity in a little while. But I'm explaining to you what happens when a person is not mature in terms of understanding. Number one is that according to Ephesians chapter 4, they are going to be double-minded in their acceptance of the truth. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, that this pandemic has really shown us that many of us are not mature in the faith. When we allow a disaster like the pandemic to make us become uncertain about the truths that we have always believed and always understood, then we know that we have a problem. All right? That's what Paul says, that if we're tossed to and fro in our minds about the truth, it means that we are, we are children in faith. And secondly, the Bible tells us that those who are immature in, in faith, they feed on milk and not on strong 
meat. But the spiritually mature knows what they believe and have proved my experience that truth is reliable and they are able to continually advance by feeding on strong milk. All right, I'm going to wrap up now by, by, by giving you and explaining to you what is spiritual maturity. The first one is maturity in love. And, and, it, and based upon time, I'll have to pause here and then pick up tomorrow morning. So I'm going to be explaining to you maturity in love, maturity in faith, and maturity in understanding. I want to start with maturity in love and end with it this morning because I want you to, to, to know where I'm going. You see, love, brothers and sisters, love is the goal of our character development as Christians. When Christ redeems us, when he saves us from sin and restores us on a path of righteousness, he is expecting that day by day our behavior will become more like him. More and more, we will remove from ourselves the selfish and ungodly practices that we practice in our former life and begin to reflect more of the love of God because this is how God operates. He operates by love. And the Bible teaches us that this is truly the goal of our development. Jesus says, be therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is, is perfect. What that means is be therefore mature in love as your father is mature. He is able to love the, his enemies, to be kind unto the unthankful, and so on. Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. I cannot wait for the day to come when the Adventist church is measured not by how much we keep the Sabbath, but by how much we love each other. Because that is the goal of our development. And this love is referred to in the Bible as charity, as most of you might know, a translation of the word agape. And both the apostle Paul and Peter show from scripture that maturity in love is the goal of our character development. In 1 Peter chapter, chapter 1, as I mentioned earlier, Peter says, besides this giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Because charity is the end result. It is the goal of development. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and to fathom all mysteries and I have faith and move mountains and have not love. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames and I have not love, I gain nothing. And then he went on to describe what charity is. My brothers and sisters, I make an appeal to you this morning as I, as I come to a close. We need to get back to the point where we understand that love is the goal of our character development. That is maturity. That is spiritual maturity. And if we are not demonstrating the love of Christ in our lives, we have much work to do. When it comes to the end, brothers and sisters, we are, if we do not produce love, if love is not revealed in our lives, we are on fruitful branches that Jesus will have to remove as a good farmer. And the Bible tells us what that love is. It says, love suffered long. Love is kind. If we have more love in the church, brothers and sisters, we would have less infighting. Love envy it not. In other words, love can see other people more gifted than it and it is still happy just the same. Love is not proud. It is not puffed up. It is not rude. It is not selfish. It is not easily angered. My brothers and sisters, I wish I had more time to expound on these things. We need more and more to reflect and to reveal this precious 
gift of God in our lives. Our behavior, as I wrap it up, our behavior, don't miss this, our behavior as Christians must be measured by love. Even as Seventh-day Adventists, some of us, we are so faithful in keeping and preaching Sabbath and Sunday law, and yet we are unkind, we are selfish, and we are proud. And that's why Jesus will say to many of us, depart from me, you that work iniquity, because I know you not. My brothers and sisters, let love be the goal of our character development, because by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have love one for the other.